Coach Jay Thomas, the Demon football coach, after his team has beaten Nichols and Thibodeau and comes home to play Abilene Christian. Coach Thomas, uh, that win in Thibodeau uh, was kind of a triumph of uh, the uh, Demon's will over the elements. Uh, you beat the wind, you beat the rain, and you yeah. beat the Colonels. Talk yeah. about it. You know, uh, Doug, it's always great to go down the bayou or down the bayou, as they say down that way, but uh, to get a win. It's uh, any time in this conference you, you can go on the road and win is really huge. And uh, very happy, very excited, very proud of our team to go down there and handle, like you mentioned, the elements. And uh, it's not an easy place to go and win. So uh, very proud of them, very happy for them. And it was a lot of fun riding back on the bus. You know, um, hadn't heard that, you know, much this year, but it was uh, it's really good. And I think the last three weeks, you know, our guys have had a lot of fun playing football. Now, the game presented wind, presented some rain in the second half, and uh, that very much influenced what you guys did. Well, yeah. It, um, you know, we just didn't know exactly when it was going to be in full effect. You know, we got the rain early, uh, had the wind, was blowing pretty good at the beginning of the game, and then obviously it deteriorated as we got into the second half, and it really got bad. And, you know, uh, it just got to the point where, you know, the passing game, uh, you know, was going to be obsolete. I mean, it just, you know, it's just with the conditions, you, we didn't want to take that risk. Um, so, you know, our receivers had to give them one up for the team, so to speak, and, you know, had to become blockers. Like they said, they became extended offensive linemen, <laughs> so uh, the line of scrimmage. Uh, but they did it, and, and it, you know, and that's what it's all about, you know, is being a good teammate and, uh, you know, being a team player and doing what you need to do to win the football game, and that's what we did, you know. So um, hats off to our offensive line, uh, you know, our receiving core for blocking well, our tight ends for blocking, and then, of course, our run, running backs ran the ball really, really well, uh, found, found some open seams. Uh, DeMar and DT and, and Chris Jones, all three contributed uh, in that. And uh, with DeMar scoring, I think, four and DT scoring one. And then you got to add in, um, you know, uh, Blumenthal coming in, in for relief for Rivers and, um, you know, being able to run the, the ride option and doing some different things there. It, it put a little pressure on their defense. And then, of course, our defense scrapped around and got five takeaways, I think, within the game. and. Uh, you know, and being aggressive, being focused, that's what happens. And, um, you know, having that, um, that smart effort, you know, and, and being in the right place at the right time. Well, let's talk about DeMar Lorenz, who uh, ran for 166, career high, who had four touchdowns, tying our school record held by Joe Delaney, Sidney Thornton, and Mario Cage. Uh, he is the Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Week, is a very strong candidate to late to this afternoon to win Louisiana Player of the Week. Uh, in this game, what did DeMar do so well? Well, the, I mean, one of his early runs, he just made an unbelievable cut. Um, they had one guy out there, uh, uh, what we call an overhang, and he just made an unbelievable move on the guy. Uh, DeMar is obviously number one, he's a great kid, um, good guy, but he loves to play the game. He comes to practice every day. So it's fun to see, you know, a, a young man like that have success. But he, he's got great vision. Uh, he, he's very patient as a, as a ball carrier, as a runner. And, and it's paying off. It pays off for him. He made big runs last year for us, and, and he had some really, really big runs the other night. I know there's one he would like to have back. I would, too. You know, it's the one he was getting ready to break the record on. He was, I mean, a yard away from getting it. And... Uh, I think the next time we'll see him secure the ball or either, either he'll dive for the end zone at that point. Probably you have to credit the Nichols defender who chased him. Well, down he, you got to give them credit. He, he came, he hustled over and, and, and knocked the ball out at the last second. So, yeah, you, you do have to give that guy some credit too. Yeah, we saw that last week, uh, the week before at McNeese. And it was Chase Collins yeah. doing it and saving a touchdown and recovering the fumble. And right. She was on the other foot. We yeah. just had more margin. That's right, yeah. and, and um, uh, thankfully we didn't have to really need that one, you know, so uh, we, we, maybe we get that one back this week. We'll That's see. Right. Let's talk about this week now. The, the Demons are at home against Abilene Christian, a team that, like the Demons, doesn't look impressive when you look at the record. However, 
One thing that certainly looks impressive is how they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with McNeese, just as we did a week earlier, and uh, battled the Cowboys down to the final moments of their game Saturday out in Abilene. Yeah, Coach Cullums uh, does a great job. And, you know, and it's just like credit to our kids, you know, to keep playing, to keep fighting, come to practice, you know, and staying with uh, a good attitude. You can tell they're, they're doing the same thing with their guys. And a really good three and five football team. Uh, played Magnese in a very close game, low scoring game. Uh, and we know that, we just came off of that one, you know, to, uh, to better play those guys and play them close. You know how difficult that is. So very talented. Um, and a lot of these kids we played against last year, uh, particularly the offensive guys, they, they rotate two quarterbacks. Um, they have a couple of tailbacks that are really good. Very good with offensive line, uh, receivers that can run and catch too. So, you know, in a defense that flies around and very mobile. So it's, uh, it'll be a great game. And, you know, once again, you know, it's Southland Conference and you know, the way I look at it from top to bottom, it's the best, it's the best league in, in the country. All right, uh, records have fallen this year. Again, Ed Egan piling up a bunch of them. Um, DeMar last weekend with the single game touchdowns record. Chris Moore is uh, two points away from being the all-time leading scorer in Demon football history. Talk about what Chris has done uh, throughout his career, and particularly this year where he's been nearly perfect. Well, yeah, Chris has uh, really worked on uh, being consistent in his field goals, you know, and it's been a process for him. Uh, of course, he's hit, hit some really huge kicks for us here, you know, in his career. Um, one that always comes to my mind is that last one at, at Louisiana Tech. So, uh, but he's been very consistent in it. He trained hard for it. Uh, the guy's got uh, tremendous talent, big leg. And, uh, you know, he's a lot of fun to be around, too. He's, he's such a competitor, and he wants it to be right. But it's, it's you know, that's interesting, you know, and uh, uh, be excited for him. You know, hopefully we can get that taken care of this week. Yeah, that's right. We're hoping for that. Now, defensively, uh, your team has improved, and now you face an Abilene team that, from what I understand, would uh, like to throw it all over the ballpark. They do. Uh, yeah, there's a mixture of quarterbacks uh and they got one that's a really good thrower. Um, he, can, he can get it around the park pretty good. And then you got the other kid that just played against McNeese, who's 14 and four. You know, I hadn't quite got the names down right in the middle of doing that, but, uh, but both quarterbacks are, are very good at, at efficient at throwing the ball. One a little better than the other, and the other one's a little better runner. So they got two different uh, combinations coming at you. Uh, they did the same two guys last year. Uh, which gives you some problems when you defend. So it's almost like you got to have two two uh, game plans prepared when when those guys are in. But the thing to have too now is they got a couple of running backs that are really really good, and their receivers run great routes, catch the ball, a lot of speed there. Offensive line is big, physical. That's what I was impressed with playing them last year. You know, film didn't do them justice. And you know, you go line up and you look out there on the field, you go, whoa. These guys are stacked up pretty good, you know. So, uh, anticipated to be the same way, and you know, and very talented football team. And hey, three and five, they're playing really good football at this point in time of the season. So, everyone's coming down the stretch, and and I, and I think everyone's going to give it their best shot. Okay, three games in November, two at home. Um, it is uh, you've been good in November in your first two years here. Uh, the Demons have done well this month. Uh, what is the secret to finishing strong? Well, here, here's the thing, I, you know, something that we'll address again tomorrow with, with the team when we get them back. Um, you know, no matter what has happened, you know, in September and the early months, you know, if you can go out there in November and really play well and, you know, and hopefully come up with those wins, say hard fought wins, you know, down the stretch. That's what most folks will remember, you know, and uh, it, it's, they'll remember how you started a lot of times, but they're going to really remember how you finish. So that's, that'll be the message, and that's what we'll be preaching. And, and I think our guys, you know, and, and trying to be smart in how we prepare and how we practice and those type of things, we may have to cut back a little bit, you know, on the amount of time on the field and try to rest our legs a little bit so we're fresh for Saturday. I know you're happy to be at home but it was nice going back to a place you were at 14 years in Thibodeau 
and uh, particularly after the game, you came home with some pretty good grub. Tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, well, Natchitoches is home, you know, now, but that was home for a long time. Uh, seems like an awful long time ago, too, you know, as I go back now. But, um, yeah, I had a few surprises on, on the seat of the bus when I got back. Uh, had a little turtle soup, had some crawfish etouffee, um, fried turkey, man, it was amazing. Fried turkey and some peanut butter fudge, homemade by my good friend, Timmy Ordon. So he, he was the turkey and the, and the fudge provider. And my buddy, uh, Brent Morrow, we call him Ski Boo. He had the turtle soup and, and all those good fixings for us. So yeah, it was a great bus ride back. You know, get to go down, got to see a lot of old friends. Um, you know, it was very nice, very sweet to get the victory. Thank the players for it uh, on behalf of you know, myself and Coach Day you know, to, to go down and get that win, it was, it was really special. And, the and, we brought the, and we brought the wood back, the NSU trophy. That, that's the most important thing. That's pretty good. Yeah. Turtle soup maybe just. Turtle soup was right up there with it. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks, Coach. Got it.